Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Middle Earth Shadow of War. If you've missed any previous episodes, you can click that card in the top right, and it will take you to a playlist where you can get caught back up on the series. But today, we are in the region of Saragost, going after every single Gondorian artifact, starting with this Gondorian artifact in the southeast corner of the maps in the caves. And we have a Graug right here in front of us that we've got to take care of, or perhaps bypass, but either way... He's got to be dealt with somehow. Because the artifact is right behind his lair. So if we can kind of break him. If we can break him, then we can ride him. There we go. And now he's mine. No big deal. Awesome. And we'll leave him to deal with those orcs like he was doing. But now he'll ignore me. Alrighty. Let's see. What do we got? I already, I already collected one Gondorian. Ooh. Minas Ethel is on Gondor's frontier, so we have few occasions for the grand balls and masquerades that are surely common events in the capital city. Fine dresses like this one are worn for ceremony, funerals and weddings mostly, hmm. not for lordly entertainment. I wonder if the noble families of Minas Tirith spared a thought for us, holding all of Mordor at bay while they danced. I don't know. But I do like the uh, design of this dress. You can see the wing patterns there on the shoulder and on the sleeves, uh, re reminiscent of the, the seabirds, which, uh, which are on a lot of Gondorian armor, the wings. It's a very common motif in Gondor. Another fine garment thoughtlessly cast away. Who in Mordor would wear such a thing in days like these? Mm. Certainly not me. Let's see, so we got a bunch to get, so let's get going. We got another one here in the caves. We're just gonna kinda make our way in a loop around the map. Okay, here we go. It's up here, I see. Let's hop off the ground. Cool. are neither the only denizens of Mordor, nor the first. Easterlings and Haradrim have settled here from time to time, often at the Dark Lord's invitation. They are scarce today, but one can still find their strange artistic carvings scattered in places from Nern to the city of the Corsairs. Hmm. Yeah, this looks like a carved mummock tusk. Some ivory. Uh, not sure how big it is, but yeah, you can see on there, uh, in the middle, a, a carving of probably a Harad riding a Mumuk. Although it looks pretty small for a Mumuk kill. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I really, I hope we could get more interactions. Oh. I know you like turning this crew, but that saves me the trouble of testing their loyalty myself. By showing me the bad fruit. You're making my ranks stronger. Ooh. Okay. Flammable and vulnerable to stealth. What are you immune to? Arrow proof and immune to curse. Enraged by goals. Alright, well I know how to deal with you. We'll tame your beast. And then we'll take you out. We got a Grog on our side. You picked a terrible time to attack me. Dang. Yeah, you're done, son. There we go. Okay, gotta hop off, because uh, I want him. Whoa, holy crap, fell through the map. Um, And I'm dead. I have never had that happen before. And he killed... Okay, no, he was killed by the growl. Did I die? What what happened there? <laughs> I've I've never had that happen before. Okay, um, that was weird. Wait, yeah, Truly, I didn't. This is a battle of inches. If we are moving in the right direction, it matters not. 
Okay, I'm a little confused, but I think that counted as me leaving the map, not... It counted it as me leaving the map, not me dying. Okay, anyway, we're headed to headed back to the caves for the last artifact of the caves. But that was that was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> I'll see you guys back where we're supposed to be. All right, here we go, back in the caves. Hopefully, nothing too crazy will plague us like that again. To most Gondorian. This midnight urn is a simple pot of clay, but to the denizens of Minasetho, it represented shared sacrifice that only those who live on the frontier understand. For centuries, the name of every able-bodied resident of Minasetho was placed in the midnight urn, and at sunset, a name was drawn. Hmm. That person would have to patrol the city's walls until sunrise. The task was ceremonial once we had a professional army, but that made it no less important. From our earliest days, it was always a neighbor watching from the walls. I was ten the first time they drew my name, and I've never been prouder, though I could barely see over the parapet. That's actually really cool. I like that. It's too bad that... Well, I'll tell you in a second. Why leave the defense of your walls to chance? It isn't about chance. It's about unity. Everyone's names are mixed together, and everyone takes a turn on the wall. Cool. But, uh, let's see. Where are we headed next? Just up here. But yeah, unfortunately for me, Shadow of War put most of their, like, really fun digging into the lore stuff into the background and just kind of let the Nemesis system play in the front. Which is, which is cool. The Nemesis system works great, but the story left a lot to be desired. And I feel like if they put, if they put more time and effort into the main story like they did into these into these little details and artifacts, we could have had a really special, really special game. Gondor's artisans rival the elves in their dedication, if not their skill. None more so than our weavers. Hmm. Paint on a wall of canvas will fade in time, but thread retains its vibrant color for centuries. The Numenorians taught our people the art of the loom generations ago and it is a talent we've nurtured ever since. Our tapestries immortalize our greatest triumphs, but it seems there's always another enemy to darken the horizon. Hmm. Cool. So yeah, the Numenorians the are to the gun. Oh. Wherever it was, I doubt it still stands. Only the strongest fortresses last long here. That's true. But yeah, so the Numenorians are to the Gondorians as the uh, English were to the people of the United States, with the exception being that Numenor is no longer there, and of course Great Britain and England still are. But same, same sort of thing. Like, the United States is different from England, like Gondor is different from Numenor, but it's the same basic culture, same language for sure. All right, we're headed up north to the next uh, Gondorian artifact. Oh, well, looks like we got another Graug. Let's see, can we take him on? Oh. I wonder. Shoot! Out of elf shot. Okay, well, we've, li we've unleashed him. Let's stay out of his sight. Wait, he was guarding something. seen one in person. This cloak is as light as the morning fog on the shoulders. Hmm. I tried it on once, and its colors seem to shift and blend as the light changes. How meager the product of our looms is when compared to elven handiwork. Yep. It looks like kind of like the the cloaks that the Fellowship received from Lothlorien. It is of my people. A people we see precious few signs of in this land. Let's see. There we go, right there, northeast. But um, what was I saying? Okay, uh, this it has uh, that the shimmering light effect of the cloak is very similar to the cloaks that the Fellowship receives from Lothlorien. Kind of 
acts as like an active camouflage. My earliest memories are of being nestled under blankets as my mother showed me the illustrations in a storybook about Loki the Larrikin, whose mischief always ended in disaster, though she was always one step ahead of her stern governess. I found the book tucked away years later after I learned to read, and I was surprised to learn that the storybook was full of little morality plays, not the comic tales my mother told. I wonder why she did that. Oh. Yeah, that is weird. Her mom was just making up stories? Doggerel to amuse children, I see. No. Something more. I read this storybook to my son long ago. Huh. That's curious. I'm not really sure what they're trying to say there. Just a little bit of backstory. You forget I forget though that Talion's a dad. Or was a dad. I mean the, no yeah, he is a dad. But uh yeah, his son and wife are dead. But unfortunately at this point in the story, Talion seems to have kind of forgotten about his quest to break his own curse. But I mean, I don't know. When faced with the decision to save the world or save my own soul, I wonder which one I would pick. Leave a comment. <laughs> Let me know. Would you uh, would you release yourself to to die? Oh, it's in a cave. Hang on, let me take a look at the map. Let's see. Yeah, you're down here. I'm gonna have to go into the fortress. In which, in, in, if that's the case, then let's go ahead and get this piece first, and then we'll go down to the caves. All right, yeah, like, cause it's ultimately like kind of a morality question, like which is more important, the world or your own soul? But also, like, is anybody's eternal soul worth the living world? You know what I mean? Maybe we'll find out. I still don't know how the game ends. Purposely avoiding spoilers. Men and orcs have clashed for centuries. In living memory, the greatest battle between them took place near Long Lake, where men, aided by mm. elves and dwarves, battled the orcs and goblins of Moria. The free folk won the day, and some accounts claim that eagles of the Misty Mountains swooped down onto the battlefield, casting the orcs down from the cliffs and mountains where they stood. Seems a fanciful tale. I saw no eagles overhead when Minas Ethel fell. Though we did have Talion and his strange powers. We would have welcomed aid from anywhere. Even the skies. That's actually pretty cool. And of course she's referencing the Battle of the Five Armies the at the end of The of Hobbit. The Misty Mountains are more than a myth. Well, perhaps. But I doubt they'd fare well against the drakes I've seen. Now the Drakes, uh, which in the in the Lord of the Rings films and books are m more represented by the fell beasts, which are the, kind of the same thing except they can't breathe fire. Um, but the, an anyway, the eagles avoid. Oh crap! Long jump. The eagles avoid Mordor specifically because of creatures like that. They'd have to contest the air. Let's see. Where are we? Where are we? Um, I can't quite see. It says there's a cave here. All right, so I searched for a while. So let's let's take a look. I've, I found it. It says it's right here in this cave system. Now, see, there's a wall of ice right there and a wall of ice right there. This is definitely the wall of ice you're looking for. But there are several cave openings. And the cave opening you're looking for is up high right there at the top of this ice tower. There's more over there. Don't go to any of those and don't try don't mess around with the left ice tower. It's definitely the one in the middle. Cuz that, I mean that I finally figured it out, but it was a I I ran down like three or four different caves before I finally figured out where I was trying to head to. So now that we finally have the correct cave system, uh let, let's see what artifact was so well hidden. This artifact was a gift from Gondor's other frontier, 
the long beaches of Unfalas along Gondor's distant shores. Hmm. Their lord, Galasgiel, sent us this ceremonial bowl with water from the river Morthont, and we kept the bowl long after the water had evaporated. I've often daydreamed of visiting Unfalas. I think I'd like it better than the capital city of Minas Tirith. There is too much of the frontier within me to be happy living in settled lands. Hmm. Or you could move to Rohan. Rohan's very frontierish. Lots of unsettled territory around there. Especially since the Rohirrim don't settle in one place. Alright, so let's see. We just got a... Uh, three more. So one, two, three. Okay, so one's in the fortress, one on the cliffs, and then one over there on the other side of the hill. Let's get going. This bowl is far from home. As are we all. Hmm. Let's see, just on top of this tower in the midst of the fortress. No fo no, n no, secrets hidden deep in the heart of the fortress, though, this time. Ooh. I've never seen a walk, but books and traveling hunters have told me plenty. The goblins of the north can ride walks as the men of Rohan ride horses. Their howls can be heard leagues away, and their senses are keen enough to track even a ranger. What makes a warg truly fearsome is that they hunt in packs of a dozen or more. Mm. Categors are more dangerous, but they travel in smaller numbers. A feeble blessing, that. Huh. Hey, I that's another thing I really wish was in this game, was wargs. Wargs. I'm glad they don't range in the Mordor. Even a pack of wargs would find survival here difficult. Yeah, I mean, except for the fact that we see wargs in Lord of the Rings from Mordor. I mean, I guess hypothetically they could have been, you know, brought in from outside by Sauron's forces. But I, st I think it's silly that there are no wargs in Mordor in these games. But I guess, you know, they made it a creative decision and had to stick to it. Christmas in Mordor? Let's see. Just up here. Well, second to last artifact. The lamps of Eregion illuminate a room with a soft glow. One that leaves only the most tenuous of shadows. A light that seems willing to turn corners and reach further than it ought. When we stored these lamps in the Great Hall, I would light them for an evening every midwinter just to ensure they still functioned. They cheered me so much that I always resolved to do so more often. But then I'd forget or put it off. How I miss their light now. Hmm. I have no lore tidbits about this lamp. It's just a lamp. Hmm. Okay, so there you go. Lore. All right, last artifact over here on the other side of the hills. Looks like I'm going to climb up the mountain pass to get to that quarry. Man, Saragoss is, like, such a cool region. All righty, here we go. On the north end of this mountain pass. Last artifact of Saragost. And second to last, uh, of, and that means we only have... Uh, Gorgoroth to search after this. And then all the collectibles will be had. I never dared to break the seal on this scroll, though I often wanted to. I found it in a dust-covered box with a label marked Maps of Southron Trade Routes. Baranor is a Haradrim, so perhaps this scroll has a map of his homeland. Breaking the seal is strictly forbidden for those who aren't Lords of Gondor, and as much as I'm curious... I know my father would not approve. Huh. All right. Well, there we go. Manfield. Hey. I will survive you. Go there. Eh, I don't have time for you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, please don't forget to leave a like if you like. Subscribe if you want to see more episodes from this. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.